Good afternoon, everybody. I'll try that one more time. Hello, folks. Uh, hey, how do you do? <laughs> thanks for coming over and, and uh, taking a look at what we've been doing so far in terms of the Senior Center project. I have uh, one of my old managers just walked in a few minutes ago, and it reminded me of how long ago we started this project. <laughs> Sorry. So, does the microphone, it's not going to amplify, it's just picking up for the sound. So, hello, can you hear me better now? Um, so we, we've been working on this project for a long time. Um, we are currently in what we're calling phase two of our um, remodel of the old highway shop and what that really means is that at this point, Venture Architecture is putting together the final designs. They've got about two more months to do that, and by the end of October, we'll be ready to go out for bid. And at that point, once bids come back in, the county board will have opportunity to decide what's the next step. So that's kind of where things are at. Um, we've talked about this quite a bit along the way, and what we wanted to do today was have the folks from Venture are just going to go ahead and tell you where we're at and show you a little bit about what the interior of the building might look like and how we're dealing with some of the issues that we have there and then from there when we're done here one of the options will be for folks to be able to go over to the building we have it opened up and there's a section that's been cleaned so that we can see what it will look like when it's done and so those of you who are interested are certainly welcome to go over and take a look at what the interior of the building will look like. We've got one small section and most of the rest of the building is sectioned off so we'll keep you in that one spot but again people are you're welcome to come on over and take a look at what the inside of the dining room part of the building will look like. And from there I'm going to turn it over I'm going to introduce Stephen uh, from Venture Architecture and Stevens, the guy who's really been working with Jake and Rochelle and I in terms of the internal design of the Senior Center part and also worked with Dan Williams on the internal part of the EMS part of the building. So, it's all yours. Thank you, Joe. Um, again, my name is Steven Schneider. I am the designer for this project from Venture Architects. So today, I would like to give you guys a walkthrough on everything that we've worked through up to this point. On my left here, we have an exterior rendering of the building as it's proposed to be. Hopefully, most of you will recognize it. This is just to the north of us. Here is 14th, running north to south here. So this portion is the existing county highway garage that we are in the process of renovating. This addition was made some decades ago and is also still there. It was originally a um, several garage bays and for at least a portion of it, we're gonna retain that same usage for the ambulance that will be housed there. A portion of this building that you may not recognize is the northernmost portion here. This is an addition that we're planning on constructing to house the EMS and emergency services um, spaces for their their uh, technicians to sleep and live and eat and work as they are on duty. Um, th uh, there are just a couple additional images here showing different portions of the building and how it will relate to the site. Now I'd like to discuss the layout for you all. So this is the, the existing highway building here, north is up. Uh, on the northern portion here, this is the emergency services staff area that I just referenced a moment ago. Then here is where all the ambulance bays will be. And just to the south of that, this is where we then transition into the senior center EMS portion of the building. This is going to be predominantly uh, the administrative spaces for the ADRC where Joe and Jake and Rochelle will work. And then there's going to be some public amenities to the west here facing 14th. So this is going to be activity spaces for, for you all, for the users, whether that be art or library or um, fitness centers. And as we come down to the southern portion of the building, this too 
will be public zones for, for you all to use also. As we come to this, to the center portion here, this is the entrance, this is gonna be the reception area, and behind that there's gonna be some administrative spaces, Jake's office will be there, ready to help anyone who needs assistance. We'll have the restrooms along this wall here, and we're proposing in this section, which is right behind here, this is going to be uh, what we're calling the living room or the gathering space. So what we want to do is make that a very welcoming, very comfortable space to be in. We're proposing a, a fireplace and lots of soft seating where people can gather, play cards, meet up, talk, spend time. Now the final portion of this building, which I've left to last, is clearly visible here. This is going to be the banquet hall. That's going to be really the uses that we are in right now of this space. And oddly enough, I think in the new <coughs> building, this space alone is as big as this building here. So you'll have all of your meals, all of your social events, dances, New Year's Eve parties. Everything will take place there. There'll be a full service kitchen, so we know Arnie will be happy. We've had a lot of conversation with him. Uh, and that's what we have planned right now. The, the last image I have for you all is the Senior Center and ADRC, just a blow up of that portion. And as I was discussing before, we really kind of split the, the public zones here with the, um, the private zones here for the administrative spaces. So we wanted to make sure that everyone in the building had views and sunlighting throughout the day. So please feel free to come up and take a closer look if you'd like. Um, at this moment though, I'd really like to turn it over to uh, my coworker, Tanya. She has been a very big part of this project recently as she's taken these, these layouts, just these two-dimensional plans, and she's transformed them into three-dimensional images showing furniture and fixtures and colors. So I'd like to turn it over to her now. Thank you, Tanya. Hi, like you said, I'm Tanya Avello. And uh, we have a few images here and we have some finishes to show you as well. And I'm going to focus mainly on the senior center portion. I mean, the EMS is also included in this project. Um, but a lot of the finishes we're planning for the more public spaces will just sort of move into EMS and be slight variations of that. So that's really where our focus is today. Um, yeah, that one may be on this end. This is a really blow up version of that plan you just looked at. And these colors are not to be taken for <laughs> verbatim here. We're not, we're not doing aqua. This is just meant to show the type of flooring that it is. So don't take it too literally. Um, those images you can start to take a little more literally. And if you get a chance, if some of you folks in the back can't see very well, maybe when we're done or while I'm talking, feel free to get up. We have carpet down here and some ceramic tile, some porcelain tile. If you want to just take a look, it gives you a better idea of what the reality will be versus the computer image. Okay, and the easiest way for me to start is really um, at the front door. Um, again, I'll, this is the whole plan, and what I'll do right now is just focus really right here, which is the front entry and the gathering space, that lounge area Stephen mentioned, as well as the banquet hall. So it really depicts it a little better here. Um, walking in the door, we'll be doing a walk-off carpeting on the floor. That's this darker one you might see here. It's meant to really take off salt and water of stuff when you come in. So this will be here and it'll also walk, come into the building some distance. And then in this space here is where you would put your coats away. So you come right in this little door, put your stuff away. Again, that flooring will be absorbing a lot of that water coming in off, especially in the winter. Um, and then you come into this space where we have um, this little bit darker, I'm calling it charcoal for lack of a better word, but this sort of carpet which hides a lot of soil yet it has a lot of life to it. It's very durable. Um, it's a very standard commercial carpeting, so it really is very great for soil hiding, and the fiber is antimicrobial and very easy to clean. So that should last you a long time. What we're trying to do here is really give you finishes that stand the test of time. I don't want to give you anything that's too fashionable, that you know fades away in a couple of years. We want to give you something that really is going to last and feel good even 10, 15, 20 years down the road. So what we've done is really play off a lot of the uh, features of these buildings. If you haven't had a chance to go, try to follow us after this program. We'll show you. There's an existing ceiling that's a barrel vault, and it's wood, and it has lots of wood ribs on it. 
we really wanted to work with that. It's a really neat look. So we have that. You can see it a little bit better in this image if you get a chance. I know you're, some of you are sitting pretty far away. Um, but you can see that big wood ceiling up there. And what we've done is put in, uh, I, we call them sails, but they're sail-shaped elements. That's what these are. Those will help with acoustics and also bring the ceiling down a little bit just for a more cozy sort of feeling. Um, these are very high ceilings. We wanted to have some seating areas where it was more of a nine foot height, felt a little more residential and comfortable. So we'll be introducing that, we call them clouds, <laughs> a cloud ceiling within that space. Um, so those, uh, do we have a ceiling plan by any chance? That might help. <coughs> So when you come in the space, and Stephen's going to hold up a, a reflected ceiling plan here, you're going to be walking in here, and then these are these uh, sails or elements I'm talking that we're suspending in the ceiling. Um, they will be, and if you look at this view, it's a little easier to tell. Um, if you come in the front door, you'll take a turn to the right, and there's a, a fireplace there, and then there's some of these elements that make the ceiling lower and also help with acoustics. And as you head down that direction, this is the view you'll have as you're heading back toward the banquet hall. And again, those elements are here. There's an existing door that's a big bifold wood door that we're gonna to plan to reuse. We're gonna strip the paint off and just have it set up so it's like a rolling barn door. So it'll be a nice feature. We're just using some of the architecture that's there. Chances are it'll probably be rolled open all the time. But <laughs> it's a nice thing to see as you sit there. So we're trying to work with all the elements that are existing and then just play off them and try to make it a warm and cozy space. And this is just if you came in the door and turn to the left. I can help you look at these too if you come up here later. If you come in the front door and then head left, you'll pass the reception desk and then head down the hall, which is leading back to all the amenities back there, these offices. Sorry to be jumping. If you come in the door and head left, you'd have that view and then you can go back here. So is that? Yeah. Yeah, this is, these are all the different, um, you know, the disability benefits specialists and all the different offices back here. And also, there are some activity rooms here and an art room. And for that, um, we're going to switch from <coughs> carpet to um, a more athletic flooring, which is this one with the cushion back. So this, will, this is where all those maybe yoga classes or some athletic <coughs> things happen. So we wanted the floor to have a little bit of a spot. Yeah, yeah, there's a little bit of a cushion to it. Um, then there's also the fitness room right here, which would have more of a standard floor like this, which maybe you've seen at a YMCA. This is where the treadmills will sit in that kind of type of flooring. And then in the uh, restrooms, we're going to switch to a porcelain tile. There's one on the floor here if you want to take a look too. Um, it's, it's playing off the colors again. And we're working again with that existing wood. You'll see it. It's kind of a honey color. And that's, why we're, that's where this whole palette came from. We're just working with the wood that's there. The walls in general would just be a light paint color. I've got a couple of those. Being that the floor, the ceiling is so interesting and our floor does have a fair amount of pigment going on, the walls would really just be more light reflective. There's not a lot of need to do a lot with the walls when you have such interesting things going on everywhere else. So we're proposing more of a neutral wall. In some places maybe having you know, a darker one being an accent here or there, but in general more worried about the light reflectance. And then to help with different the types of equipment equipment that are coming through here, and there's folks in wheelchairs or what have you, we wanted to have the wall be very durable from about 36 inches down, just to help with the wear and tear. So Wayne's not replacing drywall constantly. So we have a uh, this is a wall covering. It's called Zarel, and it's very durable. You can see it's also kind of works with our palette here. But if you ran you know metal things into this, it's very durable, even though it is lovely. You can take a feel for that too. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see it, it really doesn't absorb much at all. It's a good way to use it. And then you're probably very familiar with this. Um, things like transaction tops, the reception desk top would be a solid surface. You may have this sort of product in your home too. It's uh, very durable again. Um, doesn't stain and should last a long time. A lot longer than some other finishes might. Uh, and then again, the fireplace, we didn't really talk a whole lot about that, but we are trying to reclaim some of the existing stone that is on the exterior of the building. 
Because it sounds like we'll have some surplus of that. We're going to try to clad that fireplace in the same stone. So, and out. Yes, fireplace. Yes. Yeah. Um, and just, I want to clarify a little bit more, too. Um, this carpet I held up was that darker one. That's the main path they would walk down. And then we're showing this sort of next color is a bit of a stripe that would be more in this range. And then the lounge group, where you don't have as much traffic, we can get away with a lighter color. Uh, this is just as cleanable as these. It really won't stain, but it also, if someone spells, spills Coke or coffee on it, it won't be as obvious if it's in a spot where you're less likely to drink your Coke and coffee, which would be the, the lounge area. So anywhere you see this kind of gold color would be this one. And then we have this even a little more interesting one. It has slightly more texture. Um, trying to give it more of a residential feeling. And this would be set up to look like area rugs, even though it will be flat with the rest of the carpeting. So there'll be no level change. But we will have this interesting one in these squares underneath the chairs and lounge areas. So it feels like an area rug and gives that sense of presence without having a trip hazard. We've been very sensitive to that as far as mobility of folks. So anything, we're just running carpet everywhere to stop spills or falls. And we're being very sensitive about transitions we don't want to have any change in level for folks. Mm -hmm. And that same textured one would be in here. And this is just uh, really decorative. There's no reason for these circles other than they just create zones. Instead of having this one huge room of the same type of carpet, we thought it would be a little cozier if you set up little nodes. Um, we're also talking about maybe a stage. The top of the stage would probably be this. And then we're also talking about in front of the stage having maybe a dance surface. <laughs> Sounds like that's a desire of some folks. So. We're going to try to work with that. We saw people dancing today. Do I understand that the dining area is going to be carpeted? Yes, the dining area, the bulk of it is carpet, except for this zone right here, which we're talking about a dance floor. Is that easy to move the, char the chairs? Yes, it's a very low pile. If you take a look, it's a, a loop. It's a loop carpet, so it's, um, and if you feel it, it's, it's flatter than it looks. It looks kind of textural right here, but if you get up on it, you'll notice it is actually pretty flat. So am I forgetting anything, Stephen, or is that pretty much it? The long and short of it. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, the size of the exercise, the fitness room there, how does it compare with the one we have now? It's probably not a question. Probably 10 times larger. I wouldn't say 10, but... Yeah, compared to the fitness center that you have right here, um, well, just to give you an, an idea of scale, this this room in this dimension here, that's 30 feet. That's 30 feet. So that's that's going to be wider than this room is what right now. It's going to be considerably uh, larger than the fitness center you have right now. And we knew that that was a very uh, big talking point when sitting down and planning this. That there was a big desire to see an increase in that space. So we wanted to accommodate for that. Please. Um, we were under the impression that the art room was going to be the top room. There's three there. Yep. That one there. Is that true? Is that going to be the art room, or is it going to be combined with something else? Well, currently we have this one called the art room here. Oh, okay, but it's, you also said that you were going to have exercise and classes in there because that's why you had. Oh. Well, the reason we wanted to use this material is it's perfect for an art room because you don't necessarily want a carpet. Um, you want to have that hard surface, easier to clean with paint, yeah. acrylics and things like that fall down. But we wanted to give it that backing, that cushion backing to not, not only for comfort, but if that space was used for a different class, it would, it would be able to facilitate that function. We want to call it out as the art room. And will it have running water in there? Can you have sink in there? Yes. Yes. They told us that it Yes. Yep. Thank you. My pleasure. That's what this is for. So I we can mention too. I have an architect question. Oh. Yes, sir. Uh, ADA accessible. We need the bathroom doors 
wide enough so people can get in and out with wheelchairs. Yes. Not bumping into the, another door. Okay. You know, like what we have here. They're not wide enough. Okay. The question was. And also, you know, so that the grab bars, bars, the grab bars, stalls, and ADA like height toilets and all that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. accessibility is most important. And how many stalls are there going to be in the water? All right, so the, we have multiple questions, and they're both very relevant questions. I want to repeat it to the group so we're all on the same page. The first question was about accessibility. Um, accessibility of the building and predominant, um, mainly the bathrooms. And the second question was how many fixtures will there be in each of the public restrooms? So to address each question, the entire building is completely ADA accessible. There are no stairs, grade changes, or anything of that manner. Speaking to the bathrooms, uh, we have taken particular care in making sure that each one of them is accessible not only in terms of the doorways but also in navigating the bathroom so there shouldn't be any conf conflict with someone in a wheelchair bumping into sink sink countertops or any fixtures like that and to the final question the public restrooms you see here they're going to each have five fixtures so the men's room will have two urinals and three three stalls, and then the women's restroom will have five stalls. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm getting a little prompt back there from my supervisor. Um, there's also a family room that we've taken into account. So this is a single-use one that is, is very large in space. So this can be someone who needs special care or has someone who is watching over them and has to go in with them, or someone who just, I guess, needs um, more space. And um, the family restroom will have grab bars on either side of the stall. And in both instances of the public restrooms, there is one stall that is specifically called out for um, accessible. So it has a larger doorway, it's larger in its footprint, and it has grab bars. There's only one? One in each restroom. But we are planning to go a little bit above the code. I mean, that's what the code requires. The code requires you have one, but we're talking in, about doing a little more than what the code requires as far as having more of the restrooms uh, have an ADA height rather than just a standard toilet. Yeah. And we're kind of in talks with everybody about that. Sometimes there's two or three that are waiting for, for, the, for the tall one. Right, and we're, have, we're considering extra grab bars in places the code wouldn't require as well. So we're trying to take that into consideration over and above what, what would be required. Are your doorknobs uh, accessible for elderly, or are they, are they the knob or the levers? They are for the elderly. Mm -hmm. Good. Yes. What is the plan on the outside for weather protection from the door to the drive up for the bus okay. or cars okay. or dropping yep. off people? I got. Okay. Um, can you grab my exterior render? Yes. So the question was. What, how are we going to treat the exterior of the building as a visitor enters? So how are you going to pull up your car? Is there going to be protection from the elements? And that is a very good question because when we first started working on this project, it was brought to our attention that this entrance here is particularly windy. Uh, there's no cover from rain or snow. And of course, that is a very big concern and we wanted to address all of those at once. Um, the entrance of the building, if you look on plan, there's going to be an exterior vestibule. So there's going to be complete climate control as you walk in. There is a vestibule here too, so it'll be similar to that. There'll be more doors and it'll be more accommodating. In terms of weather, we've, we've proposed um, a canopy system that would be two new canopies, but for the purposes of this discussion, there's going to be one at the entrance that would cover anyone walking in or anyone being dropped off by a vehicle. Um, another thing that we wanted to take into account was retaining the southern wall as the entryway because the prevailing wind here is from the northwest and that is why this entry here is so windy. So we wanted to turn our backs to the wind and create some sort of new canopy to be built and it's freestanding. We didn't want to tie back into the building or, or touch that stone in any way. We really wanted to respect that material. So we've created freestanding canopies to protect from the elements and by turning the buildings back we're going to try to prevent any of that those wind gusts. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm curious to know um, what is the maximum capacity? For instance, if you're having a, a New Year's Eve party or whatever, 
according to the fire codes? That, the question was um, about maximum capacity within the building. Now, I must admit some sort of, I must admit some ignorance on this topic. I can't give you the exact number per fire code. I know that the banquet hall, as, as depicted here, this is showing a capacity of 170 people. Now given the size of this building, I don't think that that would be an issue at all. But again, I don't want to say for sure, because I can't say what the fire code <coughs> mandates at this moment. Are there two emergency exits out of the dining room? That, that, I don't, gotcha. That it, the question was, are there two emergency exits out of the banquet hall or dining room? And the answer is yes. Uh, this is the banquet hall here. There's an exit here, which is a pre-existing opening. And then there's also an exit here, which is currently a door. The idea of, of kind of respecting the stone that's there, when it came to making new windows or doors or openings of any type, we wanted to place it in a way that was already an opening. So we didn't have to do so much stone cutting on the part of the contractor. So there are two um, fire exits here on the dining room. So what are those blue things that are right next to the fire exit? This right there. Uh, those those are um, pickleball courts. They've been a part of the project program for a while now, and we heard they were popular, and we wanted to show them throughout the process. <laughs> yes, sir, in the back. I'm thinking about uh, somebody dropping somebody off in a car and maybe getting out and coming around to assist them and get out of the car. Does the canopy extend over so that the person getting out of the yeah. car or whatever is all also blocked from rain or snow or things like that? Unfortunately, this image here isn't what we have currently. We've been in touch with the civil engineer and we've been redeveloping this turnaround space. So what I can say right now is this is almost right, as it's shown here. This is showing one drive lane come and loop through the entry of the building. What is not shown is there's going to be this drive lane, but then there's also going to be a turn lane. So you'll be able to get out of the stream of traffic, which would bring you even closer to the building. So at that point, I think we're about six, eight feet away from the front door. And the canopy, I, I, could feel, I feel completely confident saying the person getting out of the passenger side will be covered. Um, to my knowledge, though, I think that that canopy should be able to accommodate for it, the driver's side, too. Is that something you could check out to see if it does? Yes, absolutely. That's a good point. How about the, uh, we have uh, Meals on Wheels. They use a separate entrance back here. Could you show that? Yes. So when I mentioned earlier to an earlier comment about there being two canopies added, the second canopy is actually just for that purpose. You can see it placed back here behind the kitchen. That's where the volunteers who do the Meals on Wheels program, this is where they would pull up, load up, and then ship out. Now in plan, you can see that right here. Tanya has been nice enough to mark it off with some walk-off carpet because there's going to be a lot of foot traffic coming in there. But this is that space here. So Arnie in the kitchen here, he and his crew would be setting up the Meals on Wheels program, lining up on this wall. You can see the um, legs of the canopy here. Now, someone, a volunteer coming in would drive in, park underneath that canopy, load up their vehicle, and then drive back out. Can I ask another question about the bathrooms? Are they going to be automatic doors or pocket doors with a button, or, or are they just going to be able to talk about automatic today? We did? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The question was about the restrooms and whether or not those <coughs> doors in there would be automatic. Um, that, that is a conversation we were just talking about today, and the decision was made that they were going to be automatic. Yes, what are these canopies made of? So right now, um, this is a good question. These canopies here, they're just going to be two freestanding canopies with two legs. These are going to be um, steel, uh, either painted black, powder coated black, it's trying to, to bring to mind the idea of a kind of wrought iron look of the old industrial age. We wanted to kind of bring that to mind because this building was from the early 30s. So it's going to be a, um, I want to say painted steel. And then underneath actually, there's going to be uh, wooden joists 
because we also wanted to soften that up too. So from the outside and coming into the ground, it's going to be that black metal, a very kind of industrial and, and hard material. But then as you come in and you look up, it's going to soften itself with that nice wood appeal. Yes, sir. Just addressing the canopy again, I'm just thinking out loud. My mother's in assisted living, but not in this county. But the canopy where she is comes over and the driver can get out, but it's not wide enough so that you have to go out and get into the elements <laughs> yeah. and go around the car to get her walker and whatever out. So, again, I think there, if, regardless of what you do, it needs to be designed large enough so you have that mobility around an entire vehicle. I'm duly noted. Uh, the comment was, uh, once again, about the canopy. It should be large enough to accommodate someone assisting someone else getting out of the, the vehicle. So that is a very valid point, and that's something that we're going to definitely take into consideration. I just thought of something, too, I didn't mention before. Um, I didn't mention this earlier, and I should have. We also, in the design, have made uh, freestanding handrails every so often, um, just so folks with problems with mobility are able to just walk a little bit, take a break, Continue on, walk a little, take a break. Gives you a little more independence. I think the image might be under here. Um, because that banquet hall is quite large, well, here, here's a good way to describe it. There's quite a distance to get from here all the way into this banquet hall. Uh, so what we've done is put a, a little stretch of handrail right here. There's one right here. Then there's a gap, so we can still walk between them. Um, there's one here, 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 and there. And you'll see that in the rendering here. That's what this image is right here. Um, and we wanted to plan it ahead of time so it wasn't an afterthought. We just didn't want to throw in some utilitarian railing. We wanted to work with the finishes so it really feels like it belongs there and it's part of the design, but it still has a functional purpose for wayfinding and just getting through. Um, so you'll see that. There's just little sections of railing along the space. And if you have a chance to follow us over there today, you'll see what a grand space it is. It's really, really nice. And that'll just help everybody get through. The sails that you put up, uh, yes. how easy are those to clean? They aren't cloth. I know when I say sail, you think cloth. It's actually an Armstrong product. It's you know a standard product out of their catalog. And what it is, is the surface of it is a perforated white metal that you'll see here. It, this has little holes you probably can't see from where you are. Um, so it will look white, because but it does have holes in it. So if you see that. Um, and what, what happens is it'll have an infill panel behind it which has an acoustical rating. Um, it's about an inch thick. So what, this will really help our sound bouncing around in that room and make it so everything's more audible. So that's what these are doing. They're a rigid material. They're actually metal. Like in 10 years from now, then the whole thing will be covered with a thick coating of dust. We put these cloud, quote unquote clouds, in so many commercial buildings. And I can't tell you I've ever seen a custodian up there cleaning them. So I think it's sort of commonplace. but. Yeah, they, if somebody gets up there, great, but often it's there and no one really knows it, like the top of a refrigerator. <laughs> That's right. I think it's really bad. Did we have any more questions? Uh, we're going to go around. Oh, yes. Um, we're also talking to also supplement what we're doing with the ceiling sales. Um, is to have some acoustical panels on the wall as well. Uh, what I'm showing here, this is a little graffiti looking. We wouldn't do graffiti for you, but uh, what this is is an acoustic panel with a fabric wrapped over it. And what you can do is print on this with any sort of image. So we're in talks with Joe and everybody about maybe having images of Sturgeon Bay or features in Door County. Um, I, you know, a photographer could take pictures of Cave Point or an old high school or the shipyards. Um, you know, print it in sepia tone and have it printed on here, and then these are art as well as functioning for the acoustics in the space. Um, so it really would help out. It would be aesthetically nice and would also function. I like it when things have two purposes. Yeah, Keep in mind that this facility isn't for Sturgeon Bay only, it's for all of us. Right, and that's so why I say Cave Point, point like anything up north, park. right, any features up throughout the county. Yeah. Stephen, I think you should mention that the gas pumps are definitely going to be moved over. You know, I'll just mention that so everybody understands. Oh yes, um, Dan, thank you. That that's a good point. So, as you may, as you all know, this is a very industrial site, and currently there are fuel pumps for the county located here, just to the south of what we're calling the entrance. Those have all 
um, it's been planned that they're going to be removed and relocated to here, actually. So here are the two of the salt, shed salt sheds. We're proposing to demolish one so emergency vehicles can enter at the northernmost point of the site and access the new fueling service station here. So they will be moved to the north easternmost point of the site, which will then give us back all of this space. Parking. 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 No. Fill up over here. Okay. The, the question about parking is has been brought up. Now, uh, to the south of our new building here, we're showing a parking lot that will accommodate for, I think at my last count, was 135 stalls. So it's, it's, very, it's pretty ample. And one thing I can promise is we're going to have a lot more handicapped parking stalls closer to the building. And also in the back here, what you're seeing are, um, well, we're calling it the, the staff parking lot, but really, it's anyone can park back we're there. We're the staff. Yeah. We own the place. <laughs> exactly. And th so here's even more additional handicapped parking right spots and, and normal parking spots. Um, and then the only other um, parking area that is to discuss is at the EMS station for any visitors that might show up there. But that is irrelevant. And once it's open, will be tearing this building down? That is the plan. So it's going to happen, it's going to have to happen in a phased process. So because we're going to still use this building while this one's being constructed. So we'll be, we'll be doing demolition there, we'll be doing new construction there, but then eventually this building will be removed because of, um, it starts to encroach on the parking that we're proposing. Yes, sir? Can you address the uh, HVAC, is it radiant heat or is it uh, hot air? What kind of system are you contemplating? The question was about the climate control of the building, the HVAC. And the answer is most of it's going to be forced air, and we're going to have uh, rooftop units located here and here to service each function of the building. So this will be for EMS here, and this will be for the senior center here. Yes, sir. For the canopy in front, do you have any like infrared heat in that to you know keep the sidewalks clean and clear? Yes, yes. The, the question was about as you enter the building, is any portion of that entry sequence going to be heated? Uh, so one thing that we have been talking about with our facilities manager is that the, the vestibule itself is going to, of course, have hot air blasters and <coughs> those floor grates to mitigate any moisture. The discussion has come up in the past whether or not we're going to actually put any of that radiant heat underneath the sidewalk or any portion of the front of that building, because that, of course, would help. Um, to, that would stop any of that snow from collecting there, but more importantly, it would stop from having to lay out salt. Uh, so that is definitely something that's in the air right now. Uh, we haven't been able to pin it down. So it, it is definitely part of our discussion we've been talking about today even. is will there be employee bathrooms for the ADRC employees separate from the public use bathrooms the answer is yes uh, it's something I, I uh, almost neglected to kind of comment on but in the administrative space back here there uh, the 88 the ADRC employees are actually gonna have their own kitchen and their own restrooms here located here so yes So the question was about, now that the, the senior center portion of the building has their own restrooms separate from the staff members, will there be any emergency response within those restrooms that someone in trouble could pull a cord or press a button to then 
get help. Um, that's something we do all the time in the healthcare field, and it's if that's a precaution we need to take, we're going to take that. Yes. Um, I was just wondering about the height of the tables. I notice when you go into some restaurants, they're so high up, like so. Some of us are only five feet. And also, <laughs> I was also wondering about. Uh, I notice every home I've ever been into, when they have a sofa, nobody wants to sit in the middle. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have sofas? Are you going to have individual chairs with? in your casual area? Sure. Um, her first question was, uh, she's been in places where the tables are too high. Um, all the tables would be 30 inches, which is probably about what these are, between 29 and 30. That's pretty standard for a seated normal chair height. Um, that's what we're using some tables, and that's what anything here would be. Um, her second question was, often when there's a full-size sofa, nobody uses the center part of it. Um, <laughs> Which is true. Um, you'll see here, I do show just individual chairs currently. But then today we were talking that maybe we want one sofa just so it has a, a visual look of being more residential. But you're right. I would prefer to have a fair amount of individual chairs because you end up getting more people in them because that big sofa will sit blank. <laughs> but maybe... Or love seat. Or love seat. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Just so those seats don't sink down to within four inches of the floor. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. <we're, laughs> they're brand new for starters, and they're commercial grade, so they'll automatically be stiffer than anything like that. Do you mean we're going to be paying for that, too? Come on. Paying for tall seats. Yeah. Well, if there aren't any more questions, um, <laughs> I just wanted to really thank everybody. This project has been so fun. I, I know I'm speaking for C, I'll let him talk to you. <laughs> but I know I've been having such a really good time working on this, uh, working with the property committee. And I know John's been really enjoying this group. So we are thrilled. It's a very exciting project and we look forward to seeing this come to fruition. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's still on? No, it's not. Yeah, thanks. Um, so those of you who are interested um, to see what the new space will look like, we have a very small section of it, but it's cleaned, and you'll be able to see what the roof and the walls with the brick in the dining room are going to look like. And I'm assuming, Wayne, you'll lead a, a path over there. But anybody who's interested, please feel free to go on over and take a look at the new space now that it's cleaned. Uh, and give you a visual picture of what it's going to look like on the inside. Thank you very much for coming. Have a great evening, everybody.